like this. But something very simple to do for theology. Mm -hmm. This is the track and the broker you have below here. Para the loss and the sanctions tell you the first. This is that fragment, this is the loss. And uh, the surface of the drum is called by membrane, which is called the visceral floor. And the inside of the chest cavity is called by membrane, which is called the pagetal floor. And this is the floral space. And the floral space norm normally, normally, is a virtual space. Because the Pareta program and the visceral flare slide one of the So it's a very constraint. Normally, it doesn't exist. But there is, a, there is a space, and in this space, the pressure is only negative. Meaning there is less than the atmospheric pressure. When the diaphragm comes down, the negative pressure increases and it can come in. When the diaphragm goes up, the patient cell, the pressure goes up and the air comes out. Uh, but again, inspiration and expiration is a negative pressure in less than the atmospheric pressure. Yeah. What happens when uh, let's talk first about pneumothorax? What is a pneumothorax? Well, a pneumothorax occurs when uh, the two most common causes of pneumothorax are there are a group of young, young persons. Typically, it's a, it's a very thin, more common in men than in women. And they are born with a small bullas, which is more common in the top of the lung. And then they rupture. And when they rupture, the air comes out, and then the virtual space becomes real, and the lungs get collapsed. Mm -hmm. We have a space here, and the, the space really becomes true and big. The second most common cause of the pneumothorax, spontaneous, not about spontaneous, I'm talking about trauma, mm -hmm. occurs in older patients with COPD. And these older patients, mm -hmm. they have big emphysematous bullas, and they rupture, and the same thing happens. When the, when the bulla rupture, then the air comes out, all the low, and the lung collapses. Okay. Well, the training for this, what to do about it, okay? You put a chest to bar. No, it okay. uh, the, the problem is you need you need the chest to be like this. Air will come out and air will go back. So what you do is you put this connect this to the water system. So we put the water here and uh, the bubbles will come out. And by physical law, gases are lighter than fluid, they will bubble out. So the air will come out and it won't go back because fluids do not climb. That's mm -hmm. the most important I want to understand. Fluids do not climb. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I'm emphasizing this is this is our own physical law. I didn't invent this. It's because I have gone to the floor of some to the ICU and I find a patient with a chest tube and then the host of the protocol is over the arm or over the side arm, like this, mm -hmm. and fluids do not climb. Mm -hmm. You have to put it in a dependent position, mm -hmm. okay? always. Right? So this works pretty good for a simple normal forest. And totally, uh, and I don't know if this is true, probably the first thing that this was used was during the Napoleonic Wars. The, the drone kids were following the troops. And the cylinder where they put the drumsticks, they put it in the chest of the soldier who have the initial wounds to the chest to, the, to drain the hemothorax. Okay. I don't know if that's true or not. But anyway, no water still at that time. But at least they drain the blood. And this, this works pretty good. The problem is when well, we have a combination of pneumothorax and hemothorax. And then, how is so crowded? The, 
the blood starts accumulating, 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 and then the, the air cannot come out very easy because the height <coughs> is, is very it's about it's 30, 40, 50 millimeters, 100 millimeters of fluid, and the air cannot come out very easy. Again, another physical law. So somebody came to the idea that Okay, what we're going to do is we are going to have our water seal and we have our tube here. Excuse me, I didn't understand. Now we're just to come in here. Dr. John Fernandez, please add extension 6842. Dr. John Fernandez, please add extension 6842. So we have this, this drainage here from, from the patient and the, the fluid that will accumulate here. And then we have another space here, another container, I'm sorry, with a water seal, seal here, seal here, and this here. So the, the, the fluid will accumulate in this chamber. <coughs> the air will bubble out here mm -hmm. and come out here. But this is constant, maybe two centimeters of water. Mm -hmm. So the column of water that we were having here will occur mm -hmm. anymore. Again, another physical law, you know. Mm -hmm. Then came somebody said, listen, why don't we connect suction to this? OK? Yeah. So, what they did was the following thing. And this here. this suction here and uh, when you apply this suction and the suction is more than let's say 20 centimeters of water we, we should use the bubbles will come out here because there's a vacuum here mm -hmm. and by physical law again air will come from outside and bubble out so it doesn't matter you can put a hundred centimeter of water, millimeter of mercury in the suction, the suction will never be higher than the, the, the level of water that we have here. Okay? It will never be higher than that. You have any questions? Interrupt me. And Boy, there were no chloralites. And we used to work with three different bottles to construct this. It was time consuming, and the nurses helped us to do it. We should understand exactly the physiology that I'm explaining to you. So we have a chloralite. You have a water seal. This one, isn't it? We have the column of water, which is this. 
and we have the collection chamber for the blood, which is this. So it's, everything is in a plural way. Mm -hmm. Everything is together, what I have is physiologically explained mm -hmm. to you. Why? I like to explain this because when you know why, you never forget. You don't have to memorize anything, just remember my drawings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is what we have. Water seal, and we inject it through here. They're different, you have to look, because everyone comes different. You put the water seal here. Otherwise, you put it through here. In this case, it's through here. You put the water here to that level, two centimeters. Mm -hmm. And then you fill this with the amount of negative pressure that you want. We usually it's 20. The other thing is important. All the bubbling that occurs is, can, be, can be some evaporation. So the volume of water goes down. But you have to be checking, putting more water as necessary. And this is for the collection of the blood. Mm -hmm. so this, this, exactly, knowing the order that, that you have here so is exactly what the total idea is about. The, uh, this device here, it has only one function. This is a muffle, to muffle the noise of the bubbling. And when, when you put suction in the wall, put enough amount until it starts bubbling, until you have bubbling here. Don't put any more, because you can put, again, you can put 200. That is not going to be more than 20 centimeters by the physical law that I explained to you. And it can be annoying for the patient all this horrible noise. This, this little amount of noise, it doesn't bother the patient. And, uh, and, the, for, and the other thing is that uh, explain to the patient why we're doing what we're doing. You know? so, so, I mean, you don't have to explain the whole thing. Do you need really the bowling for this to come up? And the, again, this is the most Okay. The other thing is that I have seen the nurses regulating the negative pressure here. You can't regulate. You shouldn't regulate. This should be always open. Always open. Regulating the wall. Please. You could then decrease. Of course, if the suction decrease, your bowling will decrease. But it's not a good idea. You want this to open. You can regulate it. Okay. There is another concept I want to talk to you. Okay. When I operate in a patient, it's what I call to I put usually two chest tubes, and I, they are connected to a white connector. Remember, the patient is lying on his back or mm -hmm. semi seated. So one of the tubes goes to the apex, and the other one goes to the base posterior. Why? When you sit down, fluid will go down, but air always goes up. Okay? That's the reason for the instructions to want to handle the fluid, the other to handle the air. Now, I never, never, never want you to climb my chest tube unless I order. Mm -hmm. okay. And I tell you why. Mm -hmm. Let me make a difference. Okay, we can use the standard. Particularly in the case of normal thorax, there is air coming out, air coming out, bubbling in the water seal. And then you clamp. Mm -hmm. And what happens when you clamp? Mm -hmm. I mean, by then, if the tube is working, the lung should be expanded. After you push the tube. When you clamp this chest tube, <coughs> the air won't come out anymore. Mm -hmm. And what happens? I pull back in. I pull back in. No, no the, the, the air will go, will go back. The air is being produced here by the bullets. Mm -hmm. Will you push the lung once a month? The lung cannot study. The lung will collapse, and what happens? What is what that you can cause Exactly. The concept of tension of Exactly. The concept of tension. What is the tension of Which is worse than tension Yeah. That's, you can hear it somewhere. Mm -hmm. so, so the air cannot come out there. So, and the, but from the surface of the lung where the bullets are, the air will continue to come out. So the lung will totally collapse. And what happened then? The pressure will increase here. And what happened when the pressure decreases here? Increase here. You have shifting of the mass time. And the shifting of the mass time can kill you. 
The heart is tough. So it's to do with the heart, not the heart. Divina Cava. The aura is very tough. The, the aura is very tough, have a thick wall. You, you won't be able to, to collapse. In the yeah, yeah. But Divina Cava, yeah, you can stop. collapse. And what happened? You stop Venus return to the Decrease heart. Decrease the preload, exactly. Preload is decreased because the Venus return is not coming back. You decrease the preload, the heart doesn't have anything to pump, he becomes hypotensing and he dies. Yeah. And attention number four is an emergency. So if anybody, crazy people, <laughs> clap my chest too, and the patient is dying, just all clap at the immediately. Yeah. Doctor, I have a question. If the patient um, has a it has orders that can ambulate, let's say, to the, to the bedside commode or to the toilet, and then the chest tube is to suction. Is it appropriate then to stop the suction? It's continuous. The suction, suction is continuous, and then you can the patient bring it back. You won't hear anybody. Right. Well, do not clamp it. Right. Do not okay. clamp the chest tube. And I, was, I tell the nurse to ambulate the patient. You are allowed to disconnect the suction, walk the patient, and hook it back. No harm done. Well, this is a very important, very important concept. You have can make the nurse of attention to the on the street, the deviation of the tracheal, gasping for her. I, mean, I don't expect you to do that, but any surgeon should be able to do that. Whatever you have around it, a pen in there, so the air can come out. He will still have an emotor, but no attention on the motor, because the air will come out. Mm -hmm. 